Good afternoon everyone. Today I will be doing a brief presentation talk about climate change. So for this presentation I'm going to discuss about how our planet has warmed up considerably over the last few decades and what impact it could have or will affect across the globe in the future. And of course, please turn off your phones or switch them on silent to minimise any disruption throughout the presentation. Thank you. Let's begin. So, what is climate change? So, for those of you who don't know what it is, climate change is when the Earth's climate system can result in weather patterns. Some of them can last ranging for like several months, several years, to even millions of years. Climate change can be an alarming race for many vulnerable people and animals. Population, for example, polar bears, penguins and seals are falling due to their landscape melting in the rising temperatures. It's not just the Arctic, tropical conditions are also at risk. Uh, we're having reports of declining animal population also linked with the same problem. Uh, it is also caused by carbon emissions, which many people sadly do this every day, uh, which can help support the change of the weather and climate in your area for mostly the negative reasons. Uh, many believe that the Earth could rise up to at least one degree and possibly higher by that, by 2100. So, whilst it may not sound much different, this is more than enough to transform the intensity of any weather conditions, powerful storms, weather fronts, which can possibly cause complete devastation in certain vulnerable countries. So, it's all across the world, temperatures are breaking records. So, 21st century, we know thousands of record records all over the world. In Australia, the summers are bringing in more extreme heat waves and droughts. In California, USA, the state is very no well known for wildfires, which damages homes, kills dozens of people every year. The figures can very easily rise if action is not taken soon. In Europe, parts of the continent are already facing much hotter summers compared to like 10 or 20 years ago before 2000. By 2050, potentially, the prolonged heat waves like 2003, which some of you may know, could potentially become the new norm. Many more lives very easily would be at stake. In India, this country along with central and southern Asia are seeing dangerously high temperatures, especially this time of the year before the monsoon comes. At the hottest months, 50 degrees Celsius plus, can you believe it? Could be the new normal for many weeks. If no action is to be done, the death toll very likely to be in thousands on a yearly basis. So, how bad is climate change? Well, it is unknown how severe the outcome will bring. Uh, but one thing is for certain, the news are not going to be any better for most countries. Rising seas and increased flooding, longer and more damaging wildfire seasons, more destructive hurricanes, more frequent and intense heat waves, military bases at risk, for example, flooding may be a problem, natural landmarks, landmarks at risk, costly and growing health impacts, an increase in extreme weather events, heavier precipitation and flooding, Destru destruction of marine ecosystems, more severe droughts in some areas, and it just keeps coming on. Widespread forest death in the Rocky Mountains, increased pressure on groundwater supplies, growing risk to our electricity supply, changing seasons, melting ice, disruptions to food supplies, Plants and animal range shifts, the potential for abrupt climate change. So, it's not just that, sea levels are rising to the highest speed in 2,000 years. So because of the melting sea, melting glacier from the sea, the icing, rising sea levels are caused by melted glaciers and ice sheets. The average rate of change is 3.4 millimetres every year. It might not sound that much, but what happens every year, it's a huge change. It's feared that some islands and small countries could even be washed away or permanently flooded by the end of the century. Miami, Florida, for example, is also at huge risk because it's more of an island-like state for a city to be raised away by just rising water levels, especially by the end of this century, potentially. Climate change can even lead to an increased rise in refugee crisis. So, on average, 21.5 million people were displaced since 2008 over the aforementioned events. Sadly, the figures will be climbing sharply, as more extreme climate change is just going to wipe out more vulnerable countries, with the result of people losing their homes and property. 
Millions of people have already moved countries due to the unprecedented nature of this climate. Next up, nearly 70% of the Great Barrier Reef is damaged. In April 2017, it was revealed that just over two-thirds of the Great Barrier Reef was known to be destroyed by our old enemy, climate change. Coal bleaching was the other ingredient added to wreck its land. This can occur when algae living within a coal tissue are expelled. This would normally happen if the water temperature is too high or above the active temperature. This result overall would make the coal lose its vibrant appearance. This turns white and it becomes weaker. White is not a good colour. Scientists know it will be hard for the damaged coal to recover. And not just that, the ocean is 26% more acidic before, since before the Industrial Revolution. Basically speaking, the pH of the ocean surface water has decreased by 0.1, which makes them 26% more acidic now. So it was way back to the Industrial Revolution times. So, waters are also not more acidic than it was over 300,000 years ago, risking the lives of many water and sea creatures. Next up, global flooding can easily triple by 2030, just 19 years from now, 11 years from now, sorry. Uh, currently, the number of people affected by flooding globally is believed to be at least 21 million and possibly counting. This could then rise up to 54 million in just over 10 years' time. This is according to the study from the Lord Resources Institute. This can result from the econ economic cost of increased flooding from 65 billion to 340 billion pounds. More greenhouse gases are on our atmosphere than any time in human history, which is obviously a support with the climate change and rising temperatures. The concentration of carbon dioxide around the atmosphere reached a milestone of 400 parts per million for the first time in 2015, then surged to high record levels in 2016, and so on. This is according to World Meteorological Organization's annual greenhouse gas bulletin. And then next up. What can we do? How can we help with climate change? Number one, get charged up with renewables. Number two, green your commute, for example, try not to travel in cars, travel in bikes, or even walk if necessary. That will help make the planet cleaner. Number three, use energy wisely, save money too. Number four, eat for a climate stable planet, for example, don't throw, don't throw away as much, and grow fresh foods. Number five, consume less, waste less, Enjoy life more. Number six, die first from fossil fuels. And seven, reinvest in renewables. Number eight, help put a price on pollution. Number nine, tell your story, listen to others. We now come to the conclusion. So, uh, thank you very much for listening to this very, very important presentation. Uh, I hope it has got everyone thinking about how we can look after our planet properly. And of course, do you have any questions? <laughs>